why are we having people in the school system that are not qualified to be teaching science at the best level to begin with? There is a problem in getting highly qualified science teachers. Um, it's, it's a given. I struggle with that on a daily basis in our district. If you want to uh, major in chemistry and you can go be a chemist at, I don't know, probably 50, 60,000 straight out and or 33,000 for me. Uh, you know, the choice is pretty simple. 33,000 is a sort of basic starting salary for a science teacher? 30, 30, 35, yeah. Jack. You have a real great potential pool now. I mean, my brother is an example. After 30 years with Exxon as an engineer, he just retired. He's teaching in New Jersey Public High School. Uh, the problem uh, for him and other people who want to make that transition, or for people who just want to go into it, is getting through the educational bureaucracy and the apparatus and the educational schools, which are a, a total uh, a disgrace. I mean, they're, they're simply not producing the kind of math and science teachers they could be producing. Instead, they're producing people who've spent, you know, 36 hours studying process of education. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way. Oh, I have to disagree with Jack. <laughs> to become a professional requirement. <laughs> you know, some of my colleagues in the research lab, I wouldn't inflict on children. There's more to, uh, more to being a great teacher and working with children than just understanding the content. You know, your average teacher has a thousand interpersonal communication interactions every day. It's utterly overwhelming. And you can be a great chemist and be a really horrifically bad teacher. So everybody with a content background shouldn't come into our classrooms because they could do more damage than good. <laughs>